uh, hoping to draw all the way back up to eight. Looks like he is eyeing a Zoroi, as you said, trying to flood the board, get the Zorark set up. Yeah, uh, we do see the Alolan Muck in his deck, and he opts to go for the Alolan Grimer as well. This is a sign that he knows what Azul is playing, and he knows, like, yes, I need this muck out right now. Yeah, really really heads-up play, really showing how important um, kind of metagaming and deck knowledge is going into these tournaments. And there's the Devoured Field playing it down just to draw an extra card off this Lily and actually draws a Zoroa off one of the first few cards. That's not bad. Yeah, it's, it's perfect. It's double colorless Zoroa. You know, he has a Zoroa GX in hand. So this is kind of what the Wobbuffet is in Azul's deck for. Uh, the situation where your opponent has ditto and then one of each of the Pokemon that they'll need for next turn. That way, you can just shut off one of their routes to actually setting up. You can take the knockout on the Grimer and have the Wobbuffet in play. No Alolan Mucks coming out. You can take the knockout on the Zorua, have the Wobbuffet in play. No Zoroarks coming out. But with the Wobbuffet prized, we're going to have to see what Azul decides to do here. So he's going to start things off with a Stellar Wish from that Jirachi. Considered playing a few of the cards in his hand first, just kind of thinking through his turn. Ends up finding an Ultra Ball off of the Stellar Wish. A lot Ultra of Ball over here. the Nest Ball, only because he's looking to probably Lily this turn. And it gets rid of more resources for him that he doesn't really need in this matchup. Tapu Koko, while a good attacker, usually your opponent's not going to play into the Tapu Thunder GX here. Yeah, especially a player with uh, like Luis, who just kind of immediately gets that Grimer and kind of immediately says, all right, I know what's going on. You're not going to fool me here. Yeah, that is the one downfall to being a player as high of a caliber as Azul. Everyone knows what you're playing. Oh, absolutely. Starting from the very first or second round, you just have a huge eye on you. Everyone knows what you're playing. Everyone wants to be prepared. No one wants to lose to the kind of known quantities. Yeah, and there you see the Raikou being pulled towards the top. It's a decision that they decided to play in their deck really for the mirror match, uh, being able to, with an Electro Power, take a knockout on an opposing Zapdos or something like that, and meanwhile charging up a Pikachu Zekrom on the bench. Yeah, the, the charging up ability, the acceleration ability is just huge on that Raikou. We see a Pikachu and Zekrom hit the board. There's an Electro Power. Yeah, Electro Power really just burning it so he can draw into extra cards, looking for a lot of cards to actually take an attack this turn. But as of right now, uh, I believe it might just be more setup and then a yeah, pass. Don't think he has anything particularly aggressive. He can uh, play Jirachi and even switch into the freshly benched Jirachi. Yeah, it's risky, though, because you have this second Jirachi on the bench now. You know your opponent's really eyeing to get Alolan Muck in play on turn two. Yeah. And we do see him make that play switch into my other Jirachi. Let's do Oof. a Stellar Wish. We're going to find a Lily, not much else. Yeah, uh, four Pokemon in that top five, uh, reminiscent of Lei last round. And here's the Let Loose. We've been talking about uh, the turn, the early turn Let Loose for as long as the card's been around, basically. And hopefully both players can come out of this with a playable four-card hand. but. Uh, it's not always what happens with that card. Yeah, it's a double-edged sword, and uh, the person who usually has the Jirachi is the one that comes out the winner. But if Lewis can actually get the Alolan Muck in play, it'll be good. But looking at that hand, Azul's not looking happy. Yeah, Azul really put himself on the back foot there with that uh, let loose, unfortunately. He's just going to pass. Do a sleep check. All right, this is a big five cards. We see the Pokemon communication that will be able to get Zorak or the Alolan Muck, which I think he actually has the Alolan Muck in his hand, if I'm not believed. We see Pokemon communication, communication rather, putting back that Zorua. Looks like he's eyeing a Zorak GX. Oh, he totally has it in his hand. That is insane. What a great let loose. <laughs> There's a Zorark GX. There's Granted, the he still ball. needs still needs a lot more cards. Yeah, Zorark GX is usually pretty good at finding you uh, the cards you need. All right. There's a seal. 
probably like to see him evolve the active ditto here just because he does know of the threat of Wobbuffet. Although, if Azul didn't get it, he could probably know that it's prized too. So there we there go. We go. Zorark GX. This is the big two cards off yes. this trade. Zero card in hand trade. It's a Guzma and was that, was that another Zorua? Guzma and Zorua. Not what you want to see here. Uh, but now Azul really will just have to attach and maybe pass his turn. Yeah, not a whole lot going on. He, there's the energy. There's what, choice band, energy switch. Yeah, just ends up passing. Yeah. All right. Ultra Ball was the draw there. Luis buys a little bit of time. Going to go ahead and throw the Ultra Ball away, draw two new cards, one of which was an Ultra Ball. That's rough. And there is Both the players pass just back. Passing back and forth. Now, Muck is really great, especially in this matchup. But if you let your opponent attach three energy without doing anything, it's not going to be pretty. And there's yet another trade here. Finally, we see a triple acceleration energy and a lily off the top for Luis here. He will be eyeing down another Zorark, I believe, or maybe yeah. even Dugong. He was holding the Ultra Ball since last turn. Now he's finally going to cash that in with the cards off the trade. Yeah, but opting to discard the Lily over the Guzma, really valuing that. So, yeah, we might see a Guzma and then a Dugong here to place 60 on two Pokemon. Dugong just going to go ahead and uh, spread, some, spread some damage around. Luis is considering that it's more valuable than another Zorark here. Yeah, that dual blizzard attack. Discard two energy from this Pokemon. It does 60 damage to two of your opponent's Pokemon. But when you have a triple acceleration energy, that's just good business. And there we go. 60 damage on the Pikachu and Zekrom GX. 60 damage on the Jirachi. No cards in hand for Luis. Uh, Azul, I believe, is still working with a pretty dead hand. I mean, some playable cards, but nothing he really really wants. Yeah, that play was really rough, though. If Azul had access to a Guzma, he could just take the knockout on the Zorark GX on the bench. But luckily for Luis, he does not. And this is what the power of alchemy does for Luis. No access to Jirachi, but we will see a full blitz taking a knockout here. So there's and a knockout. Charging up the Pikachu Zekrom. He is all in. Boom. Six on energy on the big tag team Pokemon in the active position. No cards in hand. Of course, that can turn into two after the draw for Luis. Yeah, so you see him promote that Tapu Lele GX. With a Kakui, he will be able to take a knockout with a double colorless. Draws a triple acceleration. In. Was that a Lily Palpad? I believe so. I didn't quite make out what the cards are before you put them face down. Well, that means uh, no Professor Kukui DCE for Luis here. Will not be able to take the knockout as far as we know. That means Tag Bolt GX could do some work, most likely taking down that Alolan Muck in the process, turning on Azul's deck once again. But Azul, I mean... Azul just, you know, he struggled for a few turns, and he was finally able to get a big attack with that Pikachu and Zekrom. And this really is going to refresh Luis's hand and kind of put both players back into playing this game the way they want to. There's another Zark. And wow, he has the Professor Kukui double colorless in his hand right now. But already playing the supporter, it will not be able to get the job done. Just taunting him. Uh, we could see him attach to the active and still attack anyway, leaving 20 HP left on that Pikachu Zekrom, meaning a simple riotous beating will be able to clean it up. And that looks like that's exactly what he's going to end up doing, tidying the board a little bit as we pass back to Azul. Draw was an escape board, I believe. Yeah, uh, Luis was also looking for one of his two copies of Choice Band there. Not able to find it. Pretty detrimental. Yeah, not the not the big, big explosive turn he wanted, but at least Luis is working with a few cards now. He's been playing off the top of his deck for the past few turns. Did he not trade the second Zorark? Uh, I oh, no, he did. He did. Okay. No. Actually, I don't think he did. 
but still uh, looking all right. Uh, could be a big three to four prize turn for Azul here, depending on what his hand is. Uh, but with nothing else set up and that Pikachu Zekrom having 20 HP left. There's the big GX attack, clearing the active Tapu Lele and the Alolan Muk, uh three prizes for Azul. All right, Azul goes down to two prizes, just needs one more GX knockout to take the victory. But Luis looking for an energy. There's the double colorless off the first trade. That will be a knockout and putting Luis down to three prizes as well. Time will tell, though, if he's going to be able to, to keep Azul from getting those last two. Yeah, I mean, so how, how bad is it for Azul that this, uh, that this uh, Pikachu and Zekrom is getting knocked out here? He doesn't really have, appear to have much on the board. He can use those Zorachis again, but he, just, he has no energy after this. He just has nothing really going on. So one of the good things about the way that Azul has built his deck is with the high count of Zapdos, you still get the Zapdos strategy and uh, being able to pick off the Zorua for easy knockouts. Or uh, the one detrimental thing about Zorark is that you have to have a full bench to do your max damage value. Well, having a full bench means there's going to be at least someone that has low HP that Zapdos can knock out. Right, right. We do see that Luis kind of gets to play around that a little bit because he had to, he was, you know, got to slash had to force um, the two hit KO with the Tapu Lele last turn. All right, five cards. Has another Zorark and then a couple bench Pokemon if he wants to, uh, as long as that with that communication as well. Pokemon communication shows the Larvitar. Not something you always want to do, especially in a matchup where it is one of the best cards for you. Uh, it, it's kind of better for its surprise factor value, but a player of Azul's caliber could probably be on his radar. Yeah, I mean, Azul, you, you definitely don't want to show cards like that, but it's not like Azul doesn't know the card exists. He's, Azul's a, a high level enough player that he's going to play around it as best he can, no matter what. And there's a big knockout, tag team down. Three prizes for Luis, just three remaining. I still think it's crazy how you can just knock out a Pokemon and take just, three prizes. Just take three prizes, half the game over. Yeah. yeah. All right, Jirachi moves into the active position. Looks like the beat up Jirachi is going to the active for Azul. Uh, the one good thing about Azul is all that energy on the Pikachu Zekrom was just attached turn by turn and then a full blitz. Yeah. Uh, still has access to Tapu Coco Prism Star. Still has access to Thunder Mountain Prism. And Azul has a lot of resources to work with in his hand. He's trying to debate exactly what to do. We're going to see an Ultra Ball first things first. Looks like that Ultra Ball is going to find another Pikachu and Zekrom GX tag team. Yeah, definitely the main attacker of this deck. And with a single Electro Power or Choice Band, can take the knockout right away as long as it has the requisite energy. Still going to need to do a little bit of work to get that fully set up and energized. It has a pretty hefty energy cost, but this is step number one. All right. Jirachi, Stellar, Stellar Wish. Wish. <laughs> Ultra Ball off the last one. Slammed the Ultra Ball. <laughs> exactly one of the cards he needed here. Uh... I believe he is just an energy attachment away from being able to take the knockout here. Uh, the t as long as he gets the Tapu, Tapu Coco, Coco Prism, he will be able to bench the Pikachu Zekrom, yep. use Dance of the Ancients to charge that up, and another Pokemon play the energy switch. And then he has the escape board in hand, and then I believe a Lily. He doesn't have the energy in hand? He does not. Okay, so this is... Here we go. Oh, there's, he has a there's, Toy Span E-Power. He's going to Lily draw five. Yep, this, is, this is it. This is the big turn. Oh, no, he's going to Lily draw six. There's both of the energies onto that, or uh, both of the energies hitting the board. Here energy is the switch. energy switch to put them both on to the All right. and Zekrom. And here is Lily. Three. And there it the is. Energy. He just shows the energy. Oh. He's gonna, <laughs> all right, he's, he's going to make him go through the process. All right. There's another the, E-Power. E another E-Power retreat, I, and Azul's going to win game one. I believe he took the knockout with full blitz there, uh, playing two Electro Power and the Choice Band, uh, just styling on him. Yeah, I mean, remember when Azul's first Pikachu and Zekrom got knocked out? 
And we were like, oh, well, yes, they're really rebuilt here. Maybe maybe they'll attack with a Zapdos. <laughs> you know, maybe maybe no. they'll soften things up. And then, no, Azul just uh, finds it all. You can see the kind of, uh, it, was, it was funny seeing the play style of Azul where he, he's like, all right, I need an Ultra Ball for this. Pikachu and Zekrom. All right, Stellar Wish, and then he just finds Ultra Ball and slams it. <laughs> and from there, it was just like hyper speed, knew exactly what he needed to hit. And he did get there and uh, win game one. Yeah, well, when you have a line to victory, you really just don't want to waste time. Uh, you know what you need to do, and what he needed to do was get that Pikachu Zekrom charged up and take the knockout, uh, the overzealous knockout with full blitz on my head. <laughs> It's a pretty interesting game there. We saw both players kind of struggle in the beginning. Luis had a pretty good setup of, uh, you know, Zorark and the Alolan Muck, but he was he literally had one card in hand when he did that and was just kind of took a few turns to, okay, I'll draw, I'll trade, I'll draw, I'll trade till I got something going. And, I mean, Azul, just like you said, he attached all of those, you know, with manually and then the big, uh, the big full blitz. So not exactly, I think, how these decks are supposed to play out, but maybe taking kind of a slower approach here. Yeah, for sure. Uh, just... Luis not having any cards in his hand to even really trade effectively, uh, really put a hamper on his setup. Looking Never really got to prizes. use the Larvitar that we were talking about. Doesn't seem too bad. And yeah, that Larvitar might come in handy in this game. Oh, there is the Alolan Muck in the prizes. It is one of wow. the first ones really? down below, depending on how he takes them. But having that prize is pretty big for Azul. Gonna be huge, and we are off here. Luis, of course, is getting to play first. Seal in the active position. We've got a Larvitar, and of course the Ooh. Zorua on the bench. Double colorless energy on the Zorua, and now a Tate and Liza. That is not the turn one supporter you want to see, especially it when you're down a game. Uh, Tate and Liza, a glorified Shauna. Shuffle your hand in to draw five, or you can switch your active to one of your bench. Yeah, going to go ahead and go with the first option here to draw a fresh five cards. At first, I thought that was the Let Loose Marshadow. I was like, that's not bad. <laughs> <laughs> and a second Zoro is coming down in Marshadow and a pass of the turn. Raikou is the active Pokemon for Azul. Az Azul's me. hand looks pretty sweet. I mean, anytime you see a Nest Ball and a Let Loose in your hand, it's not yeah. bad. A lot going on for Azul. It'll, we'll have to see how he ends up uh, playing out this turn. Nest Ball has a few options here. He can go for something like a Zapdos if he has the... I know he has the energy, but he could take the knockout here or Jirachi to help get your setup. Uh, seeing your opponent's board, not having any Ditto or Lolan Grimer in play, I definitely think that Jirachi is the better option. Uh, it just provides a longer game plan for you. Looks like that's what Azul decided as well, although he thought about it for a while and put the Jirachi well, back, so, so he's pretty... He's so really it's debating. awkward because he has that Guzma in his hand. So if he gets the Zapdos, he can Guzma, attach the Lightning, let loose, and then take a knockout, really putting him ahead, discarding that double colorless off that Zoro as well. But instead it looks like he just decides to go for maybe the more kind of like long-term thinking play by getting the Jirachi and then slamming a let loose of his own. Yeah, but again, uh, one of the reasons Azul kind of stumbled so hard earlier on in game one was his own let loose was kind of super detrimental to him. Oh, absolutely. Drawing a couple energy, energy switch Raikou. Thankfully, you can't draw the Raikou because he started with it. And is it going to happen again? It looks like, no, it's not going to be as bad at least. We do have the switch into the Stellar Wish. And there is the Lily. That is exactly what you want to see from Azul here. Turn one, being able to Lily up to eight cards really setting up his deck. Yeah, exactly what he wanted to see here. He is going to basically draw himself out of that let loose. It's essentially one-sided, especially because he has other things to do in his hand. Going to try to maximize the amount of cards he's drawing with that Lily here. So we've got some backward cards in Azul's deck. Listen, when you play as fast as them, like, it's... Azul, Azul <laughs> does play incredibly fast. There's the Tapu Koko Prism Star. Azul's kind of one of those players where um, they, they take their time to think through their plan, but once they know their plan, the, it goes by so fast. Right. And there's a Lily for the full eight. It's not bad. No, I mean, it's, you, you could do worse than that. <laughs> it's, it's no colorless for 10, but yeah, yeah. we'll take what we can get. Pikachu and Zekrom with an energy on it. The Tapu uh, Coco Prism Star hitting the bench up the Nest Ball. 
another Jirachi. Azul's bench is full, and he's going to pass the turn. Yeah, bench is the Jirachi just in case a Zorark comes down and maybe a switch or something like that. There's, There's the Dugong. Dugong. Zorark GX. Nest Ball. Also has the Lily in his hand as well. Still has access to trade. Uh, but Nest Ball looking to get that Alolan Grimer. Uh, also has that Mew. Uh, Mew is a pretty good card against Tag Bolt GX. That bench barrier just shutting off any damage that's done to your bench. Yeah, we've seen Mew since its release kind of... Uh, not, people are kind of split on it, it seems like. But it's going to be very helpful here. Uh, it, it's one of the best bench barrier Pokemon we've had. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, definitely. And it's attacks insane, too. Yeah, it's just, just such a good card. Very easy way to shut down a big part of the Pikachu Zekrom deck. Does not look like this Lily netted him anything he needed. Uh, uh, other than a second Zork. There is the Triple XL. Triple XL could be really good here. Is able to attack with Dual Blizzard now, uh, setting up a uh, potential knockout on that Pikachu Zekrom GX uh, and possibly something like the Raikou or Jirachi. So one of the 60 definitely goes on the Pikachu and Zekrom. It's just a question of where the other one's going to go. Yeah. And it looks like he, Luis has made his decision and it's going to hit the Raikou. And we pass things over to Azul, who's going to immediately start off with a stellar wish. Yeah, and with that skateboard, with that 60 on the Pikachu Zekrom GX, it does turn on Larvitar to actually take the knockout uh, if Luis has that double colorless energy. We're going to see the good old fashioned escape board retreat into my other draw. You let Stellar it's wish again. I feel like drawing some more cards. It's a classic. A switch, Nest Ball, Choice Band are the options for Azul. Choice Band could be pretty good here. Uh, switch also something that he needs since he already retreated for the turn. Let's go ahead and take that switch. Looks like he's eyeing his energy attachment now. Loading that Pikachu and Zekrom GX up and just passing the turn. Jirachi wakes up. Double colorless energy off the top for oh. Luis. It's pretty good. Not a bad draw. Uh, I think he might need another triple XL this turn, though, since the Dugong was able to stay on the board. Uh, Dual Blizzard again is pretty good. It sets up uh, the Pikachu Zekrom for just a knockout off of a variety of speeding instead of a Larvitar. And there is the Ultra Ball. Looks like it's just going to find the, the Lowland Grimer. Get rid of some of the cards that uh, Luis does not quite need. And actually discarding the Alolan Grimer for trade here. Just immediately trading it away. Oranguru immediately traded away. No. <laughs> Double, triple acceleration energy. Double, triple acceleration <laughs> energy. <laughs> Attaches to the active Dugong. Yeah, the only thing that's bad about this is you'd rather put another 60 on another Pikachu Zekrom. Uh, but, I mean, beggars can't be choosers. Yeah, so, so that's, that's another interesting question is, I mean, is, 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 is Luis fine just kind of doing this? Is, is he fine just sitting here with this Dugong and, you know, just trading a little bit, spreading some damage? Or would he prefer to be actually taking the knockouts and getting clearing that Pikachu and Zekrom off the board? The way he's built his deck, uh, it... Depends. He does play one copy of Lieutenant Surge's strategy. Uh, could be a very useful card. We haven't really seen it do too well here, but it really could help him set up and get a knockout out of nowhere. Um, Azul, it's he always wants to start taking prizes and everything, so if anything, it's bad for him, but it's kind of neutral for Luis. Um, the extra 60 helps a little bit, meaning you don't have to attack with the Larvitar, or if he knocks out the Larvitar, you still have a knockout with a Zorark. Uh, and I guess the one good thing is he just doesn't have another bench spot for Pikachu Zekrom before this Tapu Koko goes. Let me see a Stellar Wish find a Lily. We do have uh, access to the Switch and the other Jirachi play, which Azul is going to 
read my mind and execute now. Of course, he has the escape board on that Jirachi, so he can just retreat that whenever he feels like Oof. it. That is not a good Stellar Wish, though. Finds the escape board and Another nothing one. else. Not quite sure how many cards Azul has in hand. Not sure how powerful this Lily is going to be. I, I don't even know if he has Lightning Energy in the discard. It's unfortunate because he does not have that bench spot, so... Not being able to bench another Pikachu Zekrom means I don't know who you full blitz to. Yeah, I don't think he has Lightning Energy in the discard. Not yet, at least. It looks like he has a five cards in hand, so it's not going to be the best lead we've ever seen. Guzma. Yeah, he was looking for that Guzma to off the Jirachi. Unfortunate. It was just the card right after, after Shuffle. Uh, Guzma would have been able to most likely take a knockout on something like the Mew or even the Zork with the double colorless energy. Because right now, he has knockout on board as long as he has a basic Pokemon. We see Azul uh, actually contemplating not quite retreating yet, but he has to go ahead and go for it. There's the full blitz powering up the Raikou with a little bit of damage on it, taking a single prize knockout on that Dugong. Oh, that's not what you want to see. You never want to Electro Ball against the deck like Zorark. Yeah. And there is the Ditto. That is the fifth Pokemon. That means Luis has enough to take the knockout with Riotus beating this turn. Discards a Guzma for his trade. And really is just trying to set up his board to where he can finally close this game out. Yeah, both trades have been used. A pile of uh, trainer cards has been drawn. There's a Pokemon communication. And with this knockout, too, that does give Luis access possibly to the Lolan Muck that's in the prizes. Yeah, I didn't actually see what prize it was, so... It's the very bottom right. So he'll probably draw it. Yeah. Okay, if he draws, like, traditionally, he'll, he'll draw it this turn. That'll be big. Here comes three fresh cards off of a Lily, including a triple acceleration energy. The triple is pretty good, but one card you really need to kind of preserve now is the rest of your double colorless energy. Uh, triple Acceleration is only able to be attached to Evolution Pokemon and uh, Larvitar. Not quite there. Nope. Just a lowly basic Pokemon. But and there is a knockout for three prizes. And it does look like he got the Alolan Muck off the prizes, meaning Azul is on a clock here. He will need to figure out something. Granted, his hand is pretty big, and the last time he had a hand this big, he was able to just get a fresh Pikachu Zekrom in play and take the knockout for game. So let's see what he can put together here. Three prizes remaining for Luis. Five for Azul. We're going to start things off as we usually do with a Stellar Wish. It's a Nest Ball. Uh, could be the card he needed to find the Pikachu Zekrom. Also options for Guzma and Ultra Ball as well. Ops to go for the Lily here. Definitely needing a few more cards. Yeah, must have uh, enough cards in his hand that he can play out and make this Lily really valuable. I think I saw some Electro Powers in there, maybe. Electro Powers, Energy Switches, a Nest Ball of his own. Yeah, so here is the next ball. you got to believe that's going to find a Pikachu and Zekrom GX. And could we could we see the same, you know, no no Pikachu and Zekrom to a fully built up one off of that Tapu Koko? It's crazy to think that being the first tag team they revealed at Worlds, yeah. how powerful Pikachu Zekrom GX is. Oh yeah, absolutely. It's just been a powerhouse. We do see the Tapu Koko get cashed in. And we do see an energy switch bringing. Uh, Two energy onto the... That double Electro Power gets another energy yeah. switch, and that will mean a knockout on the active here. He'll be able to energy switch the energy from either the Raikou or the Marshadow. Full Blitz with those two Electro Power for the 210 damage. Charging up itself. I didn't see what... I don't know if it does on his hand. He also has an energy attachment available. He, oh, that is right. He, yeah. he goes to play the energy switch and then just decides to attach straight from the hand. Pikachu and Zekrom in the active position. So this is the hard part, though. Uh, one thing you have to be careful about 
if Luis plays that Alolan muck down, he shuts off his own Mew, uh, meaning Tag Bolt GX can actually take possibly up to four knockouts or four prizes. Well, Zul only has three remaining, so it's going to be a bit of risky business here. We see the Ultra Ball getting rid, getting rid of the. He sees it. He's like, yeah, this Mew is much more important. Just can't, just can't expose himself like that. Oh, and There's there the is Persian the Persian GX. GX. A card we have not seen yet in this match. Hasn't really had time to get out anything like uh, Meowth, but with the ability of Ditto, is able to get there. Triple acceleration and, the game. He has and the, Kikui. Yeah, acceleration banned Kikui, and Azul's going to go ahead and scoop them up. 240 damage, taking the knockout. And Luis has tied it up with plenty of time for game three, over 18 minutes left. So we call the clean uh, one hit knockout there. Wow, that was that was an impressive showing uh, by Luis. Just Azul stumbling a little bit in those early turns, the Dugong spreading the damage around, and then uh, just being able to capitalize on that immediate advantage and take over the game. Yeah, uh, pretty great to see Mew putting in a lot of th theoretical work in that game. Yeah, and it's really it's really been great to see Luis too. I mean, even though he's you know the the He's playing against a very famous, very you know, well-respected player in Azul. He just kind of, he's seeing all the lines. He's just making, he, he dropped the Alolan uh, Grimer on the first turn in the first game. He threw it, the Alolan Muck away, so I know I don't need this. I can't, I can't turn off my own Mew here. Just playing a very, very heads-up game. Yeah, plus the Persian GX. Uh, it, it's pretty pretty crazy to think about. Like, Zorak's a pretty good card. You know what it needs? A card that searches for any two cards. Yeah, another one. Let's see. We're going to go ahead and head over to Azul's prizes. A couple of energy, Zapdos, Raikou. Nothing too detrimental. Yeah, nothing huge there. All right, let's see. Two Lily over there could be troublesome to get a turn one for him. Other than that, all, all right. right, looking at his hand, it's very energy heavy. And he also starts that Marshadow from Unbroken Bonds. Azul will be playing first here. Drachi in the active position. Nest Ball is going to find a Zapdos. Okay, no, that Tabu Coco. Yeah. I, I I think his hand is actually pretty close to a turn, like what would be a turn one. Well, there's Pikachu and Zekrom, and there's the Let Loose. Yeah. Again, I, I keep saying it over and over again, but Decks like these, any deck with Jirachi, Let Loose, and cheap attackers, all you want to do is like, oh, my opponent didn't start Jirachi. All right, I'm going to let loose this turn. Yeah. I'm going to let loose and then use my own Jirachi, get that immediate advantage. We did see it punished Azul um, a little bit in game one. And this is where having two Lily Prize is actually big now. Uh, less chances to actually draw into it. Granted, you could draw an Ultra Ball, and then Luis has cards like Denine GX and Tapu Lele GX. But that's taking the fun out of it. Yeah, Lily is definitely one of the cards you're looking to draw to here. And he actually does find it off of uh, not the Let Loose itself, but the Stellar Wish off of Jirachi. It's a combo. It's definitely a combo. I'm not sure how many of the cards in Azul's hand he can play out, but Ooh. I do see one that a Skateboard. Per that's also a combo with Jirachi. Looks like he's going to draw five fresh ones. Yeah, not bad at all for Azul GG here. Couple of switches in hand. His hand's not actually very good. It looks <laughs> like, like there's, he, there's not many energy. Yeah, he's missing an energy entirely, it looks like. Yeah. Uh, he does have another Jirachi he can switch. We saw him do that last game as well. I, I think it would just retreat to the, yeah. Uh, but... It's really hard to find a card that gets you energy right. uh, without using your supporter. Um, so that's the one rough part. They don't play cards like Viridian Forest or Energy Spinner, something like that. Right. Lots of ways to find Pokemon, but not that many ways to find energy. As we see the second Stellar Wish finds an Ultra Ball. Uh, if Azul is desperate, we could see another Let Loose, but I don't think he is that desperate. You have to imagine you want to save the second let loose for when things are a little bit more dire. Jirachi stays asleep. Luis top deck a Zorua for the turn. Has that Pokemon communication for the Dugong. 
most likely getting that Tapu Lele GX. Yeah, I don't think he really had a whole lot else going on, although he didn't get a clear picture of his hand. Just taking a look through his deck, determining what's prized, making sure there's nothing super detrimental there. Looks like he's eyeing down the Meowth here. Uh, okay, there we go. There's the Tapu Lele GX. Lily is really what you want to be doing turn one, uh, especially against a deck as fast uh, as Pikachu Zekrom. Yeah, I don't think you can really turn that down here. And we do see the Wonder Tag for the Lily. The classic turn one plays. A lot of respect for using the Heart Gold Pokemon Communications as well. <laughs> yeah. All right, Lily Wait for six. six. Has a Zoroark and the Field Blower in his hand. Not a bad four cards so far. Nest Ball and a uh, Seal gets a little bit more flexibility on his Pokemon. Could see something like the Ditto, but he knows Azul plays that Wobbuffet now. Uh, we could see the Alolan Grimer then, but then it kind of gives Azul the option to really just pick apart his setup. Ditto Prism Star off of the Nest Ball. And, and this is where we could see it. We could see a big Guzma take a knockout on Zorua with a Wobbuffet in play, just shutting off that Ditto. That'd be huge here. And he does, well, he passes to Azul, giving Azul the opportunity to do just that. Jirachi wakes up. Again, not having any energy in his hand. Uh, could hurt him a little bit because even if he does have something like the Guzma or stuff like that, he still won't be able to even knock out the Zora. Finds a Lily off the Stellar Wish. Switch into the other Jirachi. Yeah, his hand is clogged full of support cards. Cards like Switch, Energy Switch, Guzma. Uh, does have that Ultra Ball and the Lily now. Even has the Wobbuffet in his hand, but again, Wobbuffet is a double-edged sword, works both sides. It's only shut off when it's in the active. Okay, here we go, the Ultra Ball for Azul. Clearing out his hand a bit. Looks like he's going to find it a Dene GX. Yeah, uh, it, it's really just like this hand's all right, but I need energy. I need it bad. Yeah, I mean, this is, this is what he, I mean, he, he can't really go another turn without attaching here. He doesn't even have any of the discard pile. Uh, it's just, it's just been an energy drought on the side of the field. And he does have three, was it two or three two. prized? Two prized. But with that, Denine means uh, he'll be down at least the two or three switches that he's discarded already. Energy switch, a Guzma. He might play the Guzma beforehand, honestly. A lot of shuffling here with all these activations. Azul with a few options left in his hand. Yeah, but with that Wobbuffet too, uh, he might need to be forced to use Dance of the Ancients right now just for one energy to get on that Pikachu Zekrom. And that way he can actually just play the Wobbuffet down, play the Denene down uh, after the Guzma. He does just that. He plays. So he's considering playing an Electro Power. There's the Wobbuffet. There's the Dene. Goodbye hand. Hello. Does not card. opt for the Guzma. So uh, it is going to be a little bit harder for him to attack because. I think he just drew ooh. four energy too. Yeah, he did. So he's getting it. Uh, didn't have it in the early game. He's finding it now. Stellar Wish. He's like, darn. Should have played Lily. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't quite see what his options were off the Stellar Wish. hand is now chock full of energy. Finds a choice band. The options were basically the hand he wanted. <laughs> right. Louis is going to go ahead and take a look at that Wobbuffet. Yeah, uh, it is very important keywords in that ability. As long as Wobbuffet is on your bench, it will not allow any Prism Star Pokemon to attack or use their ability. That means Ditto is a sitting 
Ditto on the bench. <laughs> and there is the attachment from hand onto the Pikachu and Zekrom GX. Yeah, but with no Zool. Thunder Mountain here, he's not going to be able to attack. And retreating to the Jirachi, he has already used that Cellar Wish, so he just passes. Rather that get knocked out than the one with Escape Board here. Yeah, absolutely. A Guzma was the draw for Luis's turn. So we have just under nine minutes left in the round. Yeah, it's going to be cutting it close, but uh, both of these decks can just take three prizes out of nowhere. Yeah, Azul's deck especially is can really explode. Like you have a few turns where you don't really do much, and it's two prizes, two prizes, two prizes. And of course, with playing Tag Team GX as yourself, you're really liable to just your opponent taking two knockouts and winning the entire game. And that there is the Ultra Ball for the Dugong here. Has the Triple Acceleration Energy in his hand. Has the Guzma as well. Guzma the Wobbuffet bring up the Dugong. That means Ditto is now turned on. So if this trade can get a Zorok or something, that would be amazing. Didn't look like it did, though. Just a Zorwan and a pair of Energy in hand, I believe. So now this is interesting. I would, uh, there's two possibilities you can go for with the Dual Blizzard. Target down the Dene and the Pikaron, or the Pikachu Zekrom, or you can do the Wobbuffet. He opts for the Jirachi here. Uh, really just trying to like, okay, I'm gonna try to leave this Wobbuffet active. But <laughs> unfortunately, he plays a lot of Switch. Yeah, it is kind of a risky proposition to just assume that Azul in this deck won't have a way to switch it out. Uh, so now he need, in order to deal with the, uh, the wall effect, he's going to need to bring it to the active position once again. Yeah, and uh, Zorak, a deck that uh, isn't really known for playing a high count of Guzma. Uh, Luis does play three, which is a lot more than we've seen before in the past. But he's kind of in that position he was first game, where one card in hand, relying off those trades, uh, and just relying off the top of his deck. Yeah, I mean, you, you, usually you can see these Zorak decks with a bunch of cards in hand, trading to find the optimal stuff. But at this point, Luis is really, this whole match, really, he's just been trading to you know, find anything until he has a big burst of cards, which who knows when that'll be. Azul opting for the choice band here. Uh, it's definitely one of the cards that is like the best option in this matchup, but with a uh, damaged Pikachu Zekrom, it might not be too good to commit it yet. Yeah, chooses not to. Just going to go for the attack, power up Pikachu and Zekrom itself. Ops for only the two energy off the full blitz. You don't have to take the full three. It does say up to. And with a ton of energy in Azul's hand, he's like, all right, that's fine. That is a single I'm still threatening tag bolt. Single prize knockout for Azul. Did not draw one of the two energy that he does have in his uh, prizes. It doesn't really need him at this point. All right, this is the tough decision. Luis has that triple acceleration energy in his hand and drew a Denine GX for the turn. Right. What a draw here. Six fresh new cards. Goodbye, triple acceleration. Let's see if we can get something set up here. Double colorless that will be able to get the damage up to 140, meaning he needs Choice Band Kakui to take the knockout here. And I think we saw Luis kind of shake his head when he drew the cards. It looks like he's uh, not exactly what he wanted in those six. Yeah, it does have access to one trade. If it's Choice Band Kakui, I, I don't know I mean, what to do. Choice Band Kakui could be huge here. Has to be exactly those cards in order to get the knockout. It is double colorless, double colorless Persian. Persian. That's <laughs> very, very far from Choice Band Kakui. I'll say that much. So one thing uh, he could do is, I, man, uh, that Wobbuffet's really putting a hamper because uh, even next turn he would have to Guzma the Wobbuffet to the active spot to even play the Persian down to get to be able to catwalk. And Luis considers, okay, well, maybe I should have just attached to this Zorark and maybe try to find a way to hit next turn and maybe, you know, Guzma something out. But it looks like he's just going to go ahead and actually attach uh, to the active and kind of make a similar play where it's not a knockout, but it is an energy drive. Yeah, you need to do the damage there. And with all the consistency cards that 
Azul is playing, he does not have room for cards like Acerola. Uh, so uh, the damage on there is damage that's going to stay. But there it is. And there is no Mew on Luis's side of the board. That means this Tag Bolt will take four prize cards if Azul chooses to. Could knock out the Tapu Lele and the Denine GX on the bench. A pair of choice bands seeing the board, clearing up some room in the hand for a Lily from Azul. And this is a huge turn, even charging up that Denine GX because uh, its original attack just does I 50. I think he atta attached already. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You're, you're right, that's what he was doing, but he did have to attach from hand, unfortunately. All right, well, there we go. There's a GX counter flipped over, four prizes. Only a single prize remaining. Any Pokemon knocked out in the next three minutes gives Azul this game and this match. And this is where that ditto being on the bench in the presence of Wobbuffet, it is just stuck there. That means any Pokemon that does 40 or more damage will be able to take a knockout and win the game for Azul here. Luis dropping a Meowth, dropping an Ultra Ball, deciding what to discard here. He does have the Persian, but as you said, he cannot evolve the Ditto into the Persian. Yeah, Under really looking Fat for line. something like a Marshadow Let Loose or Judge here this turn. Azul has it in his hand, and Luis must know that he does. That Ultra Ball does find a Zorark GX, hopefully going to use some trades to draw into some of those cards that you just talked about. Luis can't be happy with this position, but it's not quite over yet. Lily Nest Ball off the first trade. And that is rough. We do see Judge was on the top of wow. Luis's deck. Oh, just one more trade would have gotten there, but doing the smart thing and playing the Nest Ball to thin his deck out so he has more of a chance to draw it. Oh, that's heartbreaking. Yeah, it really is. We're just going to see a seal hit the bench from the nest ball. Oh, man. We already know he has the double colorless in his hand. That'll be enough to take the knockout. But Azul's hand consists of Lightning Energy, Thunder Mountain, Guzma, which takes the knockout, plays the Lily here. And now we'll just take the knockout. And Does he have another Azul trade available? Uh, he does have another trade available. Okay, that, that's what I thought, because he's not... He doesn't have another trade. Nope. Maybe we, maybe we missed it. But there we go. Taking the knockout three prizes, but we know Azul has game in hand. Just how he wants to get there. Too bad it can't be a tingly return <laughs> DX. Azul just has to think this all through. Go ahead and play a nest ball before uh, Stellar. It actually the... has Zapdos prized. Which I believe is his last one. Yeah, the, the Zapdos is his last prize. Nest ball finds nothing. I, I, I would have to think Azul sees it. Yeah, there we go. Thunder Mountain, Guzma. And there's the Taking the knockout on the ditto. Just... Stuck there from the Wobbuffet the entire game three. We don't call him Azul GG for nothing. He advances to 6 and 0, oh, just needs any result to be <laughs> Any two. result any other result than a loss. Than and he needs to get any points. I got to imagine over the next three rounds, Azul is good enough to earn some points. Congratulations to him. Uh, 6 and 0 oh is a fantastic.